Hi everyone, it's Melike. I just made an introduction to the GMP2. GMP standing for Governance, Management and Performance for Pharma Organization. As Ted just uh, mentioned, there are 16 dimensions for uh, assessing the pharma organization. And these dimensions are especially uh, to make the different dimensions of governance, management and performance more explicit to the people that will score them. Uh, while discussing or assessing these dimensions, this will also provide an opportunity uh, for pharma organization to build their capacity on these different dimensions, understand what they mean and accordingly score them to be able to to, to monitor the evolvement, the progress of their own organization. Uh, for governance, few words. It's the way how a group of people decides to do things together. How are they going to perform? Are there legal, legal requirements that need to be put uh, in motion? Uh, these are what, how will be the leadership st structure, how do we organize our membership base, and how do we ensure that we are autonomous uh, to be accountable for our members. The typical points of attention when we talk about uh, governance is how are the elections done, uh, how uh, do the member participate in the decision making, how independent we are, uh, how is the decision making transparent, um, how do we respect the internal rules and regulations that are set up legally but also by the input of the members, uh, responsiveness to member needs, non-discrimination, inclusiveness and accountability of leaders. The governance structure and uh, performance uh, should make these points of potential uh, in, in a better, better status. When we asked to our number of OPPO alumni in the past what uh, are the challenges you face, what do you understand from governance, the answers that we generally got back was that the General Assembly is the supreme organ of the organization. Uh, the leaders are usually democratically elected and they make up the board and the committee, committee for defined periods and number of terms. Uh, you often said that the member board's internal control audit and committee are all formed after those elections. Uh, you mention a lot the board composition, the organization, how they can have the member committees, formal procedures and guidelines, higher tires possible, operates in context of cooperative laws, regulation and government agencies. You did mention all of them, true. Uh, most, in most countries the regulations require to have a well-established structure that you can also see from here, it doesn't matter whether it's written from that, but the reason of having those is to clearly identify the roles and responsibilities of the different bodies within a governance structure to know who will perform about what and what they are supposed uh, to do in their term uh, of being elected. So it's about uh, assessing the performance of the people that are elected by the member of the farm organization. The challenges that uh, most of the time people encounter, which is actually a response on how uh, governance should not be, uh, most of the time problems are related to leadership. Uh, the leadership is poor, there is autocracy, uh, there is a low commitment, the terms are not respected, uh, there are disputes, power-related disputes among leaders, uh, aspiration to get higher positions, election based on social status and, you know, again, power, uh, internal politics and favoritism. These are exactly the things that you shouldn't be encountering in a good governance uh, exhibited by a farmer uh, organization. The processes you refer to as very challenging is the insufficiency of internal communication among the different committees but also with the members, um, bureaucracy, slow decision making related also to the communication process being very slow and not efficient, internal rules regulations not enforced so you might have uh, a nice regulatory framework that is coming because of the regulations of your countries, but they are not put in place, therefore the processes take more time than they, sh than they should. 
the ownership of the organization, whether it's the leaders or the members, uh, are often mentioned by you. Uh, payment of membership dues, people do not believe in the organization, therefore don't see the point of regularly supporting uh, with their fees paid in time. Uh, sense of ownership, commitment of members are relatively low because they don't have the internal communication that would make things more efficient. Uh, the profit dis distribution is often not clear and most of the time there are complaints about the division of benefits because a transparent process is not taken into account and nobody knows where the money goes for what. Independence, influence, interference of government donors and NGOs, mostly related on how the organization was established, but there's, it was really an organization that was established because of the needs of their members, or was it an organization that was set up because of the support of a government or an NGO? Uh, is also something that we come a lot across. These are the point of attention for governance. And if I need to explain a bit further the management, the management is actually what makes the day-to-day -day implementation of the decision taken at the government's body, the governance structure, put into practice. You need professional staff members that will be able to carry on the task uh, to make sure the processes are accountable, that the internal, internal communication is going well, that the legal requirements and regulations are put into practice uh, as they should be put into practice and how uh, the financial management of the organization should be taken uh, should be put in practice it's about making the engine work your farm organization need a management structure to make the decision uh, implemented in real life in the benefit of their members the challenges that you mostly encounter which we would really like to discuss in, in the webinar, if possible. Uh, it's the implementing of decisions, which again, a good management is actually the answers for the challenges uh, you, you often mention. Technical staff should implement decisions taken by board, but often they dominate the organization. The staff members, start, the professional staff members, uh, start to behave like the owner of the organization, and of course that creates uh, a problem vis-à-vis -vis the member of the organization. Uh, problems with regard to day-to-day -day management of the organization is most often because of uh, lack of funding, but not only lack of funding, but because of not performing organizations, like we mentioned in governance, uh, the due not paid, not, not having a regular inflow from the members that would support the day-to-day -day management of the organization, results with staff members uh, not having their salaries to be paid, uh, therefore, the decision that needs to be put into practice are, are there not implemented because there's no one to implement them. Uh, insufficient bookkeeping and journaling, no or insufficient yearly financial evaluation are all problems due to the lack of people that have the capabilities to undertake these tasks. Accountability, another aspect that could be uh, clarified, enforced and proved uh, with the day-to-day -day management of the organization. The challenges are often insufficient respect of steps and procedures for administration, human resources and financial policies, preparations for audit. Again, problems related to lack of professional staff members that are able to take care of these different aspects that are necessary for an organization. Other challenges, uh, poor management skills, no clear separation uh, between organization and family assets, poor record keeping, irregularities with regard to income and statement. These are the challenges you mentioned, but even in the challenges we can also sometimes see that there is a confusion uh, between governance and uh, management uh, because in an organization we shouldn't be talking about family assets. Uh, which takes me back to what we were saying about favoritism or having uh, the governance structure uh, filled with family members, which is not something that should be happening in any organization that has good governance. Um, 
that was my words for management. I will quickly uh, talk about performance. Performance uh, can be monitored based on the indicators that are selected by the organization themselves. We suggest six areas uh, of, of uh, dimen six dimensions on how to assess a pharma organization, but you have to keep in mind that you can have other indicators, uh, also depending on the will of your members, uh, therefore this can increase. The ones that we are suggesting is uh, the intervention areas where the pharma organization can provide services to their members. One of them is access to production factors and agro inputs. How well is doing the pharma organization with regard providing these to their members in an interested, interesting uh, price? Uh, good agricultural practices, how, how much do they support their members to have better practices uh, to improve yield or to have better products, uh, therefore more money, uh, more quality in the end products. Post-harvest value creation, is the organization doing anything about post-harvest value creation? Do they try to process or do they try to add different values in order to uh, reach out markets for their members? Market relations and sales, that's very linked with the earlier one. Uh, how do they how do they evolve, uh, to how do they work, uh, perform, in terms of trying to access new markets uh, to sell the product of their members. Lobby and advocacy and negotiation. How strong are they in influencing the politics, the government regulations in the favor of their members, therefore the farmers. And the assessments are done in five steps. Uh, in these 16 different dimensions that we try to summarize for you now.